now dear students so in class 9 I, I have seen in the class that many of you are finding difficult to write the programs in but in class 10 in class 10 uh, the question paper two sets are there two sets I mean the two sections are there section A and section B in section B you have to write four programs there will be six questions from the six questions or programs you have to attempt any four now any four or will be of 15 marks with two subdivisions now most of you find the logic of the program difficult so I am discussing with the programming for first now so in the today's class I will be discussing the five programs which are very very important from the exam point of view now the first program is write a program to check a number is palindrome or not and here I have given three examples like 101, 151, 444 it means that if you read the number either from right to left or from left to right it should sound same and should have a same meaning now I have started with the class name as palindrome public word palin int n n is the number or the variable as an input so I've taken some now uh, so I have taken the variables x as a to have a copy of it reverse and r stands for to store the remainder or the digit and x equal to n means I am making a copy of the input number while n greater than 0 for positive number the lowest number is 1 r equal to n mod 10 means I am uh, separating a digit as a remainder and storing it in R and this statement REV means reverse equal to reverse into 10 plus R this statement will help us to reverse the number 1 by 1 suppose if I take the first example 101 so it will take 3 steps to reverse the number and then we will do the reverse in the last we are checking the condition if the reverse variable is equal to X if it is same the number is palindrome else the number is not palindrome I hope the program is clear then we'll go to the next program now all of you see program number two so the program program number two is to print a Fibonacci series so the series in general it starts from 0 1 1 2 3 5 after that the next number will be 8 then 13 it continues Fibonacci series means that always the third number will be the addition of previous two so I have taken the class name as class Fibonacci then public void Fibo int n now here the n stands for the maximum limit means this uh, series you you want to continue maximum up to how many times so that is the maximum limit now in this program we have taken i as a variable first number as f1 second number as f2 and third number as f3 now in this program the problem is or we should take care as first two first two numbers in the series should be printed first that's why I wrote system.out.println f1 again system.out.println f2 means in the series first two numbers are printed so from the total numbers we are left with uh, means in the program already first two numbers are printed so always so from the total we have always less two so now when I am starting the for loop so I have written for i equal to 1 i less than equal to n minus 2 minus 2 because why because already f1 f2 are printed i plus plus and here the third number is the addition of previous 2 so f3 is equal to f1 plus f2 and then we are printing it and then we have to write this statement f1 equal to f2 f2 equal to f3 means this as the this series goes on every time the f1 f2 and f3 are getting reinitialized every time as the series goes on goes on goes on so always at every step 
f1 f2 and f3 their values are or or it is getting shifted by one step at every time so the, that's why in order to represent that one we have to write this statement now dear students now we come to the third program now third program is to check a number is uh, armstrong number or not so the best example is 153 now whenever we think of an armstrong number it means that uh, the ex the definition i have given there means the sum of the cubes of the digit should be equal to the input number means if i find out 1 cube plus 5 cube plus 3 cube and if i add it i should get back the original number so it is possible only in 153 if you try out for some other number you will see that after adding the digits i am not getting back the original number so for this also while loop is must so i have taken class armstrong public void num as usual n is the input number r equal to 0 x equal to n i am making a copy of it similar to program number 1 double s equal to 0.0 y because s i have taken it as double because of that statement math dot pow so strictly we have to use while loop then we are separating a digit r equal to n mod 10 we are separating the digit as as a remainder then we are writing s equal to s plus math dot pow r comma 3 so that we are finding the power of the digits we are adding it and that added value is getting stored in the variable s then n equal to n by 10 means the quotient is acting as a number for the next step then we are again now the programming part is over then we are comparing if s equal to equal to x it means that we are comparing if the sum the sum after the program is equal to the number or not if it is equal then the computer will display am strong number and if it is any other number if you give other than 153 obviously the computer will give the message as not a armstrong but i hope it is clear now dear students the program number fourth program so it is about to check a number is prime or composite Now suppose if it is a prime number, prime number means the number should be divisible by one and itself. As all of you know, the prime numbers are like two, three, five, seven, or we can say another word that it it don't have any factors. Now, and uh, so I have taken those examples. Prime number as two, three, five, seven. Dot dot many are there. Composite number like four, six, eight, nine. then some more numbers like 10 12 14 15 16 all these numbers they have many many factors but for the prime numbers we have only two factors as divisible by 1 and itself now so in this program if you see in one place i wrote c equal to c plus 1 c equal to c plus 1 means it will count the number of zeros means suppose if i say if it is divisible so if it is divisible means what the remainder should be coming as zero so that's why i have wrote n equal to uh, if n mod i equal to equal to zero then c equal to c plus 1 so i am starting the program now class number now this initial variables i have taken so i am starting the loop from i equal to 1 till the number i less than equal to n i plus plus if n mod i equal to equal to 0 so here we are checking the divisibility rules so like in case of prime number the value of c will be 2 because it is divisible by 1 and itself and suppose for a composite number this value of c equal to equal to 2 it will never be or uh, means always for a composite number the value of c will be always greater than so this condition will apply if c equal to equal to 2 the number is prime otherwise the number is 
composite. Now, dear students, the fifth program. So, write a program to print the sum of the digits of a given number. So, I have taken an example as 5341 and if I separate the digits, so 5 plus 3 plus 4 plus 1 is equal to 13. Now, for such types of programs where we have the relation between number and digits, always it is strictly that we have to use while loop, maximum case or maybe by the while loop. So, since writing the program by using by, by using while loop, it is quite easier. So, we will be taking the while loop to write the program. So, this program is also similar to like uh, palindrome program, Armstrong number with a small change. So, we write int r equal to 0 as usual. So, this is the remainder as well as the digit. So, and s as a variable to store the sum. So, I am separating a digit r equal to n mod 10. So, the percentage re represents a remainder means the output will be as remainder. So, we are storing the remainder or the digit. So, according to this program, if we see in 5341, the first digit will be separating as 1, then 4, then 3, then 5. In this way, the digits will be separated. And the digits will be separated and the addition of the digit is being done in done or it is stored in the variable s stored in the variable s and in the last step we are writing n equal to n by 10 when the quotient is acting as a as a number it is getting reinitialized as new n and this again will be and this n again it will be reused next time so this process will continue so in this example so this process will continue four times because four digits are there then after four times the computer will print the sum. So, according, according to this, the sum will be printed as 13. So, 13 will be displayed as your answer in the terminal window. I hope it is clear. And then again in the next, again in the next part, I am going to discuss some more important programs based upon local and global, how to clear the concepts. So, these programs are also very, very important. Please note down in your copies. So, in your computer copies, when the school will be open, I will be checking your copies thoroughly. And if you have doubts, you can ask me. Okay. Thank you. Be safe. And please maintain social distancing so that you, your family, as well as the whole nation can fight against the deadly coronavirus. Thank you. Dear students, you will see in your book um, where the, at the end of the syllabus see, there are certain important programs are there. So many which I have put tick are uh, very very important. So you can have a look at it. These are quite important, very often this program comes. You can have a look at these programs. These programs are also very, very important.